It's the only hat I have left from the 60s. It's May 1968. Martin Luther King was just shot in April. A few weeks, Bobby Kennedy will be killed. I'm off to a season of summer stock in Reading, Pennsylvania, where I meet Morrison and Cloudy. Morrison's the lead actor in our theater company. I'm the season supporting actor. Cloudy's the foxy blonde ingenue. Actors come and go for specific parts and leave after two weeks. Morrison and I spend off hours drinking beer, shelling nuts at the peanut bar, and swapping life stories. By summer's end, we're best buds. He's tall, lean, intensely honest, a romantic, and a brooding James Taylor kind of quality that women seem to find irresistible. Summer ends, we're all back to reality in New York City. For me, it's a rent-controlled sublet in Spanish Harlem with two old school buddies. We split the $89 a month rent three ways, dine on 99 cents, six packs of Rupert beer, bought at the brewery around the corner. Morrison and Claudia run into each other in an open coal, feel some electricity, and eventually move in together on the Upper West Side. We're all poor but happy actors. Our world is about to turn upside down and inside out. Rolling into 1969, we dive headfirst into the counterculture. Morris and Claudia and I hang out a lot, listen to Moody Blues, Vanilla Fudge, and the Who's Tommy, smoking pure Moroccan hash, tripping on mescaline, smoking lots of Maui Wowie. We're living the high life. I meet a dancer on a commercial shoot. She and I run off to Cape May for the summer. Free spirits teaching and tripping on an art commune. Summer ends, it's back to the city. We're living in her small studio on Washington Place. I start film school at Visual Arts where most of my time spent making anti-war signs. Hell no, we won't go. Give peace a chance. Make love, not war. Organizing and marching and protests and getting high on higher education mostly. The relationship with Dancer eventually crashes and burns. She says, we're done. You got to split, man. I'm gone. After a month of couch bouncing and apartment sitting for friends, I give Morrison a buzz. He tells me he and Claudia were married last summer, exchanging vows in a hippie tie-dye and bandana wedding by a lake up in New Hampshire. They gave up their place on the Upper West Side for a cheaper one in the East Village. I explain my lack of living space. He says, I can crash with them and Claudia at their pad. I'm sleeping on a homemade platform couch in their cramped living room. Across from me on a similar platform sleeps Melly. She's a friend of Claudia who just left her husband, an editor for the East Village Other. Morrison and Cloudy sleep on a tight loft space he built above the tiny kitchen. It's very claustrophobic and adjustments have to be made by everybody to get, exist in this condition. Morrison works at La Mama building stage sets. Cloudy works as a board beautician, cutting Jane Fonda style shag cuts all day. <laughs> Melly, a dental assistant, is taking an emotional time out. I'm out of work and taking classes at film school sporadically. We're both heartbroken, really bummed out. At night, we all listen to John Lennon records, smoke a lot of grass, endlessly discuss the meaning of Carlos Castaneda's books, whether they're real or fiction, and the social impact of Easy Rider, which we all loved. Morrison and Claudia embrace scream therapy, the craze, because John and Yoko are doing it. Melly and I mostly say soon and feel awkward during the loud and angry scream therapy section. <laughs> Too freaking much, man. Claudia appeals to her building super for help with our increasingly desperate living situation. They eventually find me a cheap phone booth sized apartment on St. Mark's Place, across from the Electric Circus. Everybody's cool with that. Melly divorces her husband and shacks up with her dentist boss. Morrison and Claudia eventually split up. She moves to Hollywood to pursue her acting career. Last I hear from her, she's living with a drummer from Blue Cheer, working as an assistant to Saul Bellow. She works poolside in a bikini at his luxurious home, banging down umbrella drinks while proofing his books. Morrison, he's still cooping on the pad in East 9th Street, working as a carpenter, dealing nickel bags on the side. It's there after a hit of STP that he experiences an intense religious conversion, becomes born again. He joins Hare Krishna and they send him to Florida. I hear from a mutual friend that he's detoxed, shaved his head, and takes a vow of celibacy. Far fucking out, man. That's what he always said. I had no way of knowing at the time, but that summer of love for me in 1969 marked the beginning of what would become an incredible 48-year magical mystery tour in St. Mark's Place. I'm still there, it's still magical, and I just keep on trucking.